Three minutes, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. All three engines up and burning. Two, one, zero, and lift off. The final lift off. I will speak about uh, a subject very close to you, one you might have never considered. It's very sensitive and at the same time censored. It's something we want to forget, something we don't want to listen to. It's a, a paradoxical one, known and studied by science, culture, psychologies, philosophies, medicine, anthropologies, and yet, unknown for each of us. It has its own language, its own memory. It is very limited, but with endless possibilities. In it limits transform alchemically in endless possibilities. Those who have experienced it know that it activates a process of self-consciousness. And through the experience of it, they create another realities. So, what is this unknown subject? This realities creator. I am a body. I am everybody's body. I'm an artist, a mother. I have given birth to idea creation, children. I'm a witness. I'm a Feldenkrais practitioner. I'm witnessing my body as reality. Nowadays, corporal realities, term created by Susan Leigh Falster, tells us that we are our body's unique creations of all our personal, cultural, social, family experiences. So, I, we, are embodied within this body created mother, mother. Here, out of this embodied human condition, it raises a question. How can we create, how can we produce happiness? and the millennium of super speed, super mind, of new forms of communication, of uh, the appealing virtual world of the new technology. We lose our points of interest in all this chaos. We are the first humans who live outside their bodies. These spots of outside attention creates Actions and thoughts not under our control. They create an anesthesia. We are looking for, fa uh, for fast pleasure and uh, we have a burnout stress syndrome. And we forget the condition of an absence. The absence of the experience of simply being happy. And happiness for me is very close to awareness. Awareness of who you are and awareness of who you are not yet become, embracing new possibilities of action, of feeling, of thinking, of being. Awareness of the fact that every experience, either you want it or not, it takes place and begins from this flesh. So, we start to become aware of our body, of our power and feelings, starting with analyzing the present second. So let's reduce everything you know about your body to the perception of breathing. Start to look at your body with children's eyes, without judgment. Please close your eyes. Start to feel your breathing, the movement, subtle, gentle, of your breathing moving you 
and at the same time start to observe the spaces of your breathing. Observe the position of your pelvis on the chair. Move a little bit the pelvis, just feeling more comfortable. Then go to the perception. Move your attention to the spine, the length of the spine, the shape of your spine. Then move your attention to the shoulders, right shoulder, left shoulder, to the arms, to the hands. Observe the shape of your hands and observe if they are tension or if they are soft. Then go to the head and uh, just the head, observe how the head is staying over on the top of the spine, on the top of the pelvis. Observe this architecture, the architecture of the head, spine, pelvis. Then go back to your breathing. Observe the rhythm of your breathing now and the spaces that the breathing is opening inside the chest and the belly. Listen to the newborn sensations. Gently open your eyes. Are your eyes now linked to your inside sensations while you are looking outside? Why is it so important to sense the body while moving? Why is it so important to couple movement and sensation? The slighter the movement, the bigger the perception you have. But it's very important what happens at the neuronal level pleasure and sensation and learning. Sensation increases pleasure. Pleasure increases learning. When you learn with pleasure, you produce a change in your way of thinking, in your brain. Then the Erma eye studies of Damasio and of many other scientists show that conscious movement it's making it's creating neural paths and that a large percentage of the nervous system is made of actions. But actually mostly of the time. We are thoughts of our thoughts and we are acting with reflex actions. So where is our freedom? Daily actions as walking, turning, taking, so reaching are unconscious. But if I'm conscious of them, I start to make free choices. So I can observe, for example, how I feel the feet on the floor. I start to make variations. I start to, back, to walk backwards. I repeat them in another order. I decompose them. I change the rhythm. I change the quality. My habits change in new possibilities new interactions. This is my daily practice. Cells of happiness discovered by Dr. Perth are running all over my veins. No splitting intentions. No separation between me and me. Me and you. Is it this condition the body-mind unity? 
The neuroscientist Daniel Siegel show that uh, tells that the, the mind is a process of interrelations between the body and the neuronal neuronal systems are in the whole body, so organs, heart, intestines, they have a neural network. Body and mind are a system closely connected to each other. So in any system, when you change, you move a piece. You change the whole system, so we change the movement. And also mental, emotional areas of the brain became more balanced. Mental, emotional areas, mental, emotional resistances start to liquefy. As an artist, how do I perceive the body? I can explore it as bones, muscles, skin. cells of happiness, particles, waves of the subatomic world. As a nervous system, which is emotional, as an art, which is sending signals to the brain and affecting it, as a mouth, which is linked to speak, to eating, to tasting, to primary emotion, like expressing anger, violence, joy, with eyes which can see, but also keep us in balance, which can touch the others with a lovely or an angry view. And all this knowledge transforms in personal creations, words, transform in sounds, drawings, intuition, discoveries. That's why I think it's necessary to connect education and language to the body education, to the body intelligence, to awareness, for many, many, many reasons. First of all, for neuroplasticity. Dr. Fred de Christ was moving people to create new synapses, so to develop neuroplasticity. At the same time, conscious movement, it's developing, integrating cognitive skills like attention, observation, problem-solving, memory, coordination. But let's think the other way around. Let's observe what happens. What happens when we lose the possibility? When you lose the possibility to move, we lose the possibility to feel, to sense, to see. We lose the possibilities to perceive because Conscious movement is bringing out emotion from ex movere. So, movement is helping us to face all emotion and to be conscious of them. When you look at people, do you observe their bodies? Not judging them. Not in terms of uh, big muscles, manicure, false eyelashes, eyebrows, but in terms of how they move, how they speak, how they breathe, in terms of their underskin emotions and thoughts. Are the adults all bodies smiling like the children's bodies, like the children faces? Let's do an experiment. 
start to smile a little bit. Let's make a little, little smile and observe the way you are growing, maybe, or the way you are getting little. Listen to your sensation. The smile is making you bigger or smaller. Then make a sad face, a slight contraction of your face, and listen to your sensations. Are you becoming smaller, separated from space? Listen to the sensation of your, also the chest, of the belly. If you would have to face a problem, which face would you choose? Do you need a calm, upset mind? Or do you need a really open, breathing body to face a problem? Create now your own face, your landscape of emotions. Listen to your body. If the filter, all the teleceptors are connected with the whole body from the center to the periphery, with the breathing, with the spine container of the nervous system, you are connected with specific areas of the brain which are responsible for positive actions, for a wider perception, for new ways of thinking. So, do you need to go to specific courses at the university after spending 12 years of your youth repeating yourself and uh, losing your attention because of the cyber world? Or can you re-educate yourself, start round, right now, starting from yourself, listening, moving your body, making art, culture, bringing together artists and scientists, bringing together people in the squares, in the schools, and making a billion of cells, education in yourself and for your community. Happiness is moving, feeling the body. Happiness is experimenting more. Happiness is being conscious. And happiness is being without limits. <laughs>